So a lot of the work we do in the EMDL is material synthesis, material characterization, device development, device study, cre creating a new um, crystal structure, you know, a new design material, a new uh, composition of a material that has a property. We then learn how to build that into a device. We then take that device and put it into a system. And inside of that large lab are very advanced um, uh, equipment and facilities to perform something known as molecular beam epitaxy, which is a technique by which we can create electronic materials atomic layer by atomic layer. It's actually a big deal and it helped to create a lot of the push in electronic materials at Ohio State, which is now a very, very large uh, program, probably one of the top few in the United States. The extremely large materials research community at Ohio State, which is currently, I think, the second highest funded such community at any university in the United States. The research that we're doing is to trying to design the solar cell properties to more ideally match all the energy coming out of the sun and doing so on a manufacturing platform that is already established as low cost. So the research we're doing there is in material science and how do you integrate that ideal type of a solar cell with existing low cost manufacturing as a way to achieve basically reduced dollar per watt so I would say that in the area of photovoltaics, um, we're probably the world's leader in, in devising methods to, as I mentioned earlier, to integrate high performance, high efficiency solar on a low cost platform. And so we've gotten great success in driving uh, to create new materials with high performance uh, that we think can meet in manufacturing goals. And I think that if we're successful, this can truly uh, make inroads into solar uh, with a technology that can immediately scale. I would say the other area where we're very innovative and I think we have a lot of impact and we're probably considered uh, leaders on this, we've developed several methods that allow us to look inside of real devices and determine which atoms defects, little atomic defects in devices are causing devices to fail and degrade which allows us then to inform companies on how to improve things to make it such that these technologies can become real and implemented. So that's been really great. So I, I think in the area of defect characterization and new materials like this, as well as in solar, uh, I think we've been pretty pretty successful. And a lot of researchers who are great who have grown up here are staying here, and it's because the environment's really good. We have a lot of ideas. We're continuing to help try to make our technology succeed. Uh, I think there is going to be ultimately a path toward integration of, of energy producing devices with um, smart electronics. I mean, you know, right now a lot of these devices are standalone. Um, there's a lot of uh, energy efficiency to be gained by having onboard control, onboard control electronics. We run a collaboration out of my group that includes the, the uh, leading uh, silicon solar group, which is a group out of Australia, the leading 3.5 solar concentrator group which is out of a group in Madrid, Spain and my group. For these things to matter in research, for them to matter in reality and in humanity, they, these innovations have to be somehow moved into a market, into a product. How do you get technology accepted or adopted into, into the future? So I think that you know, that's how you know, we impact you know, the future.